picturesque Perth and Kin Ross. Breathtaking vistas, high peaks, rushing rivers, and hidden glens. This is an area not short on viewpoints, so you won't want to forget your camera. But don't just take our word for it. Sir Walter Scott, no less, described this region as the fairest portion of the Northern Kingdom. And who are we to argue with one of Scotland's greatest wordsmiths? Perth and Kinross lies at the centre of Scotland and is divided by the Highland Boundary Fault, which separates the mountainous north from the lowlands of the south. In the town of Aberfeldy, visitors can experience Scotland's longest river, the Tay, where many come to brave whitewater rafting. A less strenuous option might be the Queen's View near the highland town of Pitlochry, which overlooks Loch Tummel and is one of the most photographed spots in the country. Having those green spaces around you, places where you can take your dog and your family and you can meet the grandparents and go on your bike. It doesn't matter what your, your lifestyle passion is, if it's a gentle walk or a 20 mile cycle, it's something for everyone. So whether you're seeking an adrenaline rush out on the water or a moment of reflection in the mountains, whatever makes you feel alive can be found in Perth and Kinross. It's no surprise then that it's the ideal place for today's house buyers who love nothing more than getting out and about in the great outdoors. Here we are out for a hike in beautiful Loch Lomington. This is really the reason that we want to escape to the country. So we have this, this view and this opportunity to get out hiking on places like this on our doorstep. Gavin and his fiancée Lauren might love being in nature, but their home is a two bedroom flat on a busy road in the centre of Edinburgh. Gavin runs his own digital marketing company and Lauren is an investment analyst. So like many, they work hard to juggle all the different parts of their life. Right now we don't really have any work-life balance, do we? No. Um, we live in a busy city, we work 9 to 5 Monday to Friday, so that escape is only really at the weekend. Um, so moving to the countryside, we'll, have, we'll feel like we're always escaping. <laughs> Despite their young age, the couple are already experienced home buyers. I bought my first flat a few years ago and had to redo the entire Thing, and then we also bought a property together, two properties together and renovated. So it's something that we enjoy doing together. And also we've got projects that we're always working on, like the camper van. You can see a bit of a shell just now, but we're really excited to get it ready and finish for when we move and we can be much more accessible to the locks and the mountains and all the adventures that we want to go on. And when the couple aren't off exploring, they want their outdoor lifestyle to be reflected in their new home. We'd like to bring the adventure into our home because we'd like to start a family eventually at some point. So by moving to the country, it'll give us more space, um, give our children a better lifestyle, having a big garden to play in. We both grew up in the countryside, Lauren with her horse and I, I lived up in the Shetland Islands. We look at our childhoods and we look at what we want our children's upbringing to be like and I think the countryside allows us to have that life. Lauren and Gavin are hoping their £500,000 budget will get them a detached character property with four bedrooms, a spacious kitchen and a home office. Proximity to Edinburgh will be important as they both commute to the city a few days a week, as will outside space where they'd like at least an acre of land without buildings that could be converted into a home gym or stabling for horses. Oh, it's so lovely showing such young house buyers around. It's very impressive as well. I mean, they're in their mid-20s and they've already got two properties under their belt and are heading out into the countryside for a bigger one. That's the lovely thing about actually Glasgow and Edinburgh, the big cities up here, is that it doesn't take long to get out into beautiful countryside. Here's hoping my <clears throat> many years of property experience means I can impart some wisdom to our young couple. Time to meet them. Oh, Lauren, Gavin, I'm very happy to be in Scotland, so thanks for inviting me here. And also, I think you're probably the youngest house buyers I've had in a long while. Oh. We'll take that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Congrats. <laughs> are you, are you excited about this? this? I know you've got flat, but this is like a house house that you're moving into. Are you excited about that? 
very yeah. excited. We just can't have, can't wait to have a bit more space yeah. and just get in the countryside a bit more. So yeah. it'll be nice. You're leaving quite a bustly bit of Edinburgh. Presumably your friends are there. Have you got two pools of friends that are going to miss you? I think there will be. They've got the like I play football twice a week in Edinburgh and have a lot of friends who are there and, and a lot of friends through the kind of business circles that I'm in in Edinburgh. Um, so it'll be a little bit strange moving away from them and your family being in Edinburgh. My family's but in Edinburgh, I grew up in Edinburgh, I went to school and university there as well, so I've got different uh, groups of friends. But we did actually mention that we were wanting to move away and get a bit more space just after Covid and a few friends have said, oh actually we quite like the idea of doing that as well. So. So you will be trailblazers, Trend they'll be all setters. following you. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully it'll go well. Well, we better find you a house then. Yeah. Yeah, let's Follow do it. me. Our search will be concentrated on the area around the town of Kinross. And our first stop is located six miles north in the beautiful Perthshire countryside. Our route winds through an area of rolling hills that are as peaceful as they come, but we're still just over an hour from Edinburgh and a 20-minute drive from Kinross. And should Lauren and Gavin miss the pub vibe of the city out here, well, the current owners have got that covered. Come in, look, you've got your own bar. Oh. <laughs> Very cool. Oh. oh wow. Here we are. Lovely. Look at all this. Wow. Ah. That's a view I'm talking about. Was this what you were thinking of? Yeah, absolutely. I love that it's detached. I love that it's got a garage space. That'd be perfect for a little home gym. I like the wood um, and around the, the windows upstairs as well. I think yeah. that's a nice touch. It's a very pretty house to look at. Should we look inside? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Of course. This double-fronted and detached family home was built by the owners just six years ago. It might be a tad chilly for an al fresco cocktail today, but luckily a warmer reception awaits us inside. So come into the sitting room. Oh, it's such a lovely room. Oh, oh lovely. Lovely, space. Oh, lovely log view. burner. You've got a log Perfect. burner, yeah. Yeah, nice. And, and that's this beautiful view the picture view. Wow, that's picturesque. Is this sort of what you look for? This is quite a modern sort of layout. It's probably quite modern for us. I would say we're more rustic, aren't we? Yeah. But decor is no issue to us. That's we're up for renovating yeah, and think, decorating and I things, I think if, if there's like a modern house, you can find projects elsewhere. Sure. Are you kind of drawn to projects? Is that your sort of where your passion is, or? Um, I would say I would say so. Yeah. yeah. We do like a bit of a project, don't we? So this is too easy. This is too lovely and already <laughs> done. <laughs> too pristine. Oh, it is lovely. It's absolutely it is, gorgeous. Yeah. But if you want to step out, we're going to the kitchen. Opposite the living room, there's a large second reception room, which would be an ideal office for Lauren and Gavin, who both work from home a few days a week. The kitchen diner can be found at the rear of the property. Oh, come into this bath of Scottish sunshine. Oh, wow. So and this is lovely because this runs the whole back of the house. You've got utility there, kitchen area here, dining area here. It's very bright in here. Lovely. It's very spacious. It is, I like yeah. how there's a seating area in the kitchen and then you've got your separate dining area as well for dinner parties and having family over. Yeah, utility room as well, very handy. Yeah. yeah you, you've got your range cooker. The you've range always cooker, a fan. spotted it, lovely. Mm. I think one of the big things for us moving to the country is hosting. And we, we love the idea of having a, a home where people can come for Christmas and, and things. So and I feel like the kitchen and dining room is a big part of that. Well, they say that the house is pretty much sold if you can place your Christmas tree. If you, don't mm -hmm. do it, you have to decide where to put that. That is a major... <laughs> that's, that's something for yeah. sure. <laughs> Definitely. So this is the downstairs. Let's have a look at the, uh, the big bedroom upstairs. Up on the first floor, alongside a smartly presented three-piece family bathroom, there are four bedrooms. A single and three doubles. The largest, positioned at the front of the property, enjoys a similarly impressive outlook to the downstairs reception rooms. Come into the main bedroom. Oh, again, you've got fantastic views when you wake up. Lovely. Oh. Well, this stretches all across, so you've got the ensuite. Great. Yeah. I like the ensuite. That's a luxury, because we only have one bathroom, which yeah. isn't an ensuite in our flat back home. Uh, I, like I like the view. The... I like the idea of uh, waking up in the morning and getting a look out there. You no, know, often we show people looking for a forever home, but presumably this is not going to be your forever home, is it? Maybe five years. Five years. We did say that about our current place, though, and that. How long have you been there? About a year. Not even oh. a year. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Well, you get through them quickly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
If Lauren and Gavin are seriously considering this property, I don't think they'd be in a rush to move anytime soon. Certainly not with so much space available outside. Set within the grounds is a large barn which could house their camper van or perhaps be converted into stables. There's also that large decking at the front of the property, plus even more to enjoy at the rear. Oh, nice in the sun. It's lovely. It's a great garden. It's about two acres. This is the, the back line, is that fence here. But it goes right over to that gate over there, and this little bit of woodland, and that little hut there is a chicken run. Oh, perfect. perfect. We want Yay. to get chickens in we yeah. move. Uh, I thought we might. <laughs> Ideal. We've already chosen their names. Oh, mm -hmm. really? Which yeah. names? Well, Geraldine. Yeah, Esmeralda, Mildred. <laughs> you should chuck in a morag as yeah. well. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Complete the set. Um, what do you think the price tag on something like this is? Oh, I'm going to guess 450000 Uh-huh. Yeah, I'll go 450,000 as well. Copycat. <laughs> <laughs> Copycat. Great minds think alike. Actually, you're both a little, well, a lot over budget because this is oh, wow. actually on the market for 375,000. Oh, wow. No way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, that's wow. Wow. <laughs> so you'd have a little bit of money over to play with. It's just so picturesque. It's like yeah. something at a fairy tale. Yes. <laughs> That's what we like to hear on this show. Yeah. <laughs> well under budget at £375,000, this detached family home has two reception rooms, a spacious kitchen diner and four bedrooms, one of which is en suite. Not only does it come with two acres of land, but the panoramic countryside views make it ideal for a couple wanting to truly escape the city. This property is absolutely gorgeous. The outside space I'm absolutely in love with. The fact it's got a big outdoor shed for potential stabling, garaging, and it's just fantastic. I don't think we'd ever get sick of living here. It's stunning. Like you've got two acres of great outdoor space. You've got the countryside. I think inside I'd be looking for maybe slightly larger rooms, maybe a, a bit of a project that we can that we can work on. Going forward, anything that has this sort of outdoor garden and land is gonna be an absolute winner. Can I get you guys anything from the bar? A gin and tonic would be lovely. Oh, we're right out of gin, what a shame. <laughs> a bit mind. too early for that, I think. Spill the beans though, how are you thinking about this one? We absolutely love the outdoor space. It's a very pretty detached house. Um, maybe for the next house, a bit more renovation work to do or a bit, a little bit more spacious rooms but overall it's a gorgeous house. So great location, you love this spot, mm -hmm. house could be a little bigger, maybe more potential for renovation and some paddocks for ponies. Potentially that would be a dream. <laughs> well interestingly our next property is actually this property which is oh, a wow. huge old farmhouse, ripe for renovation. No way. I was oh, wow. eyeing up the barn. I was eyeing up the oh. barn saying, that's so pretty. Let's go and see it. Wow. Our journey to the next property might be short, but the differences with our first house are considerable. There's so much here, in fact, we're not even going to start with the house itself. <laughs> oh, wow. Very cool. This is really one of five. There's this, there's this. There's a huge, so exactly the same size on the other side. Two workshops at the end. Oh my goodness, your dream. I know, it is a dream. Yeah. I love seeing the potential. This would be a big project, but we love projects. This, this is getting us both excited. Yeah, this so. is, this is roll the sleeves up and yeah, get, get stuck, stuck in. in. Yeah. Well, this is just a little entree because we're actually going to go around the front of the house. Great. Great. Oh, wow. It's a big house. It's a big yeah. house. A lot bigger than the other house we just looked at. Yeah. Wow. I'm just dying to get inside. Yeah. Have a look. There's a lot of scope for you to renovate, refresh, and put your mark on it. Excellent. Really? That's, that's what we're like after. Yeah. yeah. Good. Because <laughs> that's what you're going to get. <laughs> Follow me. Parts of this detached home date back to 1757, with several extensions added in the years since. 
The original property would have consisted of two parlour rooms on either side of the central staircase, with a kitchen diner, study, utility room and downstairs bathroom built later. We're beginning our tour in the reception rooms. So these would have been the two big parlour rooms. Very cosy log burner again. I love it's very farm cottagey. Yeah. I feel like I'm in the countryside and imagine in the winter with the log burner on, you'd feel dead cosy in here. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of some of our family homes. Yeah. That are very farmhousey and cosy. Yeah. So this is just one of many rooms, so we should press on. If you want to go straight across, yeah. that takes you into the heart of the home. Yeah, so this side of the hallway is another matching room. I like the beam. Yes. And the panelling around I, the wall, that's lovely. I do have a thing for, like, old-fashioned panelling and, and wood. It kind of reminds me of, like, an old, cosy pub. It does. This place, which I like. I really like the windows as well. I can imagine sort of leaning on here, having a cup of tea, <laughs> looking out. <laughs> it's, it's, you're already... You might as well have moved in, but you're <laughs> imagining doing that. So up a few steps. Very what spacious. do you think? It's Very big... spacious. It's a great size. Yeah, it's a big kitchen. It's gorgeous. Very cool. I love these things hanging. I don't know what they are, but I love them. This is an ideal hosting space. Yeah. Ah. So I'm imagining family, kids, animals running around. Yes. <laughs> Plenty of space. Yeah. I mean, what are your first thoughts? I mean, would you have to do a lot of work to it? Would you want to strip it out and start again? Or what's, what are your thoughts? To fit our taste, we'd have to do quite a lot of decor work, which is fine. We spotted the good old wood chip wallpaper, yep. which we've had many experiences with yes. in the past. But no, I'm really liking the features so far. It's very promising. Yeah, I think it's important to look at the space and the prominent features, and mm -hmm. then we can work around that. I'm going to let you guys explore the house in your own time. And when you're done, come find me. That sounds good. Thank you. The main staircase is that way. Great. Okay, see you then. Yeah, definitely. The upstairs landing leads to a bathroom and four bedrooms, including a twin room that could serve as an extra home office, in addition to the one downstairs. Oh, it's lovely. a big, spacious room. It is. There's a lot of work that's needed There's in the house. There's a lot of work needed in the house. Is it too much work? No. No, I don't think so. Great guest bedroom. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's a great size room. Another again. great size room. Yeah. And it has a rocking chair. Mm, That's very the dream. Cool. It's a colossal property for a couple in their mid 20s. This would be a very impressive place to live. Oh, wow. It goes, it goes on any further. Oh, it's an ensuite. Oh, it is an ensuite. Oh, it's huge. That's a nice surprise. It is. Personally, if I was looking around this house, I would be a little daunted by the amount of work. But it feels to me that Gavin and Lauren love renovating. They positively salivated over stripping all the wood chip paper off, which to me is a nightmare. <laughs> so maybe they would absolutely rise to the challenge and tuck into this with great relish. I just hear nothing but the birds. That's like the biggest contrast to what we have. This is ideal. So you just wake up, grab a coffee, sit on the rocking chair. Like such a lovely location. The outbuildings we saw at the beginning of our tour were certainly substantial, but they were just a fraction of what can be found outside. There's so many gardens here, I don't know which one to show you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the upper left-hand garden. The formal gardens sort of wrap around the front of her house in a sort of horseshoe. And then you've got all this beautiful beech wood going down to the road, which belongs to you. And you've got this big paddock on that side and the big paddock on that side. God. So much space. Yeah. So a total of eight acres. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Amazing. I think we'd have to have a couple of ponies. <laughs> you would have to. It would be compulsory. It's yeah. a must. <laughs> yeah. And how yeah. much do you think you'd have to pay for this? I'm going to go 485,000. I'm going to go a bit higher and go 495. In this instance, you are both wrong, I'm afraid. Oh. Okay. Because this is on the market for considerably lower than that. It's on at <gasps> 460,000 pounds. Wow, okay. Wow. Yeah. I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm happy too. That's given us more to think about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This could be amazing, like spectacular. Yeah. 
comfortably under budget, this spacious and extended period home would give Lauren and Gavin all the space they would need to host their families, with a large kitchen diner and four bedrooms. Its traditional features seem to have really caught their attention, whilst the outbuildings and land offer unlimited potential for our project-seeking pair. It's quite funny, when we were in the garden of property number one, we were looking over going, oh, those buildings look wonderful. And then to be told that those are property number two, that was, that was really exciting. We're in a bit of a dilemma at the minute because we have one property which is smaller and cheaper, um, one other property that's huge and a bit more expensive, so we're kind of tied yeah. in the middle. But two great properties and, and we're delighted with what we've seen so far. I'm very happy. Today's properties enjoyed the idyllic setting many rural escapees would yearn for, but no man is an island, as the saying goes, and it's vital buyers consider the practical side of a move to the country. Everything from where to do your weekly shop to where the best pints can be found. That's a lovely building up there. Oh, look at this flat, it's so really nice. That's why we're sending our couple off to get to know the local town of Kinross. Oh. Hot breakfast rolls, £2.90. I am sold. Me too. A charming and bustling town of narrow streets and old buildings, with plenty of pit stops for a well-earned break from all those outdoor pursuits. Well, the high street really is, is becoming really quite something now. Over the last five or six years, you know, we've opened and there's a uh, fishmonger's just opened. Several other cafes have opened up down the street. It's becoming, you know, there's something to go to now. You don't have to leave Kinross to get what you need or to go and see friends and have a coffee or have a meal or to go out for a couple of beers or something. Whatever you need generally is now on the high street. The town sits on the western shore of Loch Leven the largest loch of the Scottish lowlands and home to an abundance of wildlife, as well as a 16-mile heritage trail. Lauren and Gavin have come to a small craft brewery where Kinross resident and member of the Edinburgh men's volleyball team, Mark Cathro, can give them a little insight about the area. My family, we like to go on a walk throughout the weekends. The area itself, there's uh, obviously two massive golf courses here as well, so kind of around there you can walk around. We've got Kirkgate Park, it has a, a lovely play park. I've not played at the park in a wee while, maybe a few weeks maybe. So we're both really keen to get involved in the local sports. What are some of the teams that are available to choose from? I play volleyball, I started playing in Kinross and now play in Edinburgh. However, there's rugby, um, there's hockey, there's football, there's even a rock climbing up the road, there's a Kinross runners group there, um, Kinross road runners. So there's a whole host available here as well. Another local nearby attraction is Loch Or Meadows Country Park, just a 20 minute drive from Kinross. Here visitors can take part in sailing, open water swimming and paddle boarding. And for Lauren and Gavin, who love nothing more than being outdoors, it seems like a natural place for us to end our day. This could be yours. Every day could end and begin with a trip to some water. Mm. It's a big lifestyle change for us. We're you know, currently in our, in our flat in Edinburgh. It's if we want to go and do something outdoors, we've got to travel to it. And we find ourselves every single weekend leaving Edinburgh and coming to a place like this. It's, it's on the doorstep. And is there anything particular that you'd like to start doing that you're not doing now? Probably quite like to start swimming every morning before work. I think having this on your doorstep, you, you couldn't not. So. Yeah, and I think I, I just love the idea of um, joining different clubs and getting part of the community and, you know, groups that go out swimming or running and kayaking, paddle boarding. I think we're up for any activity and I, I just love the idea of the kind of community feel in the country. Seeing the houses and things today is kind of cemented that this is, this is where we want to be. Definitely. Brilliant. Have we inspired you to trade in your city life for the Perth and Kinross countryside? If so, here's what you need to know about buying a property here. The average price of a detached home has increased by 12% in the last year and now stands at just over £320,000. The equivalent property in Edinburgh would cost double that figure, so there's no doubt that a move here would make your money go much further. But with demand for properties exceeding supply, prices are expected to continue to rise. 
So if you're ready to take the plunge, now might be the time. And if you're selling up, you'll want to make sure your current home attracts as much interest as possible. The way to make a property more appealing would be you know, really see if you can get the best internet connection you can get from 4G Master, whatever, if you have connectivity, uh, that's a big thing. And realising who your market is, um, it's going to be people who, you know, enjoy rural pursuits. So, you know, research those, let people know what's in the area. Um, you know, they're, they're going to want to, to, to be able to, to take part in country life. So, yeah, make, make the most of that. Lauren and Gavin have a budget of half a million pounds to swap their two-bedroom city flat for a spacious family home in the country. But whether you're looking to trade up or downsize, buyers shouldn't have trouble finding a property to suit their needs. For £350,000, you could invest in a 400-year-old water mill on the border between Fife and Kinross. Now fully renovated, it boasts four bedrooms a large garden and extensive countryside views. Or how about this elegant six-bedroom detached villa located in the village of Milnathort. Spread over three levels, it occupies a half-acre plot and provides easy access to the countryside. It's currently on the market for offers over £665,000. I love Lauren and Gavin. They're so competent for their young years and I really think they would make a magnificent home out of that property in the countryside that we saw yesterday. But I've also been thinking they might want to start a family and like having little kids millions of miles away down a snowy road is not such an easy thing. So for the Mystery House we're going a little bit more in the community but we are going a lot more gorgeous. For the Mystery House, we're venturing over the Perth and Kinross border into Fife, heading for the village of Leslie. Here the couple would have access to a good range of amenities, making this a very practical option. We're just 20 minutes from Kinross, and driving to Edinburgh would take around 50 minutes, so commuting wouldn't be a problem. But we are entering new territory for Gavin and Lauren, so whilst they look around the village centre, I'm getting a head start on our final house tour. Now, very obviously, one aspect of the mystery property is that we are no longer in open, rolling Scottish countryside. We are, indeed, on the edge of a village. My hunch is, though, that any qualms about location are going to vanish when they see this gorgeous Victorian property. So stylish. Let's so come and look inside. Wait till you see. I think with Gavin and Lauren's taste for high ceilinged Edinburgh flats, they are not going to be able to resist this. Look at this staircase. The success of yesterday's properties was very much down to the land on offer. However, today we're bringing our young couple back into a community and also shifting the focus firmly back onto the house itself. Come and see the mystery house. You've been wow. waiting, here it is. That's a beautiful house. It's absolutely stunning. Isn't it gorgeous? Yes. yes. So the mystery is, of course, that we're not out in the middle of the countryside. True. But this is a spectacular property. It's absolutely gorgeous. It looks it, yeah. And we're open as well. I think with the properties that we've already viewed, the houses aren't our style, whereas this is more up our street, isn't this it? This is like, I mean, we've not seen inside it, but it's absolutely perfect. Should we look inside? Let's do yes, it. Yes, please. This stone-built, semi-detached villa was built in 1877 and retains all the classic features and grandeur you might expect from a Victorian home. And if there's one thing this house demonstrates perfectly, it's that the Victorians knew how to make an entrance. Ta-da! Oh. Wow. Staircase. Look at that the staircase. Very cool. <laughs> what an entrance. And then if you come in here, this is the, obviously, two matching big reception rooms on either side of the big hallway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Beautiful bay windows. You look very all aglow. Yes. Yeah. How are you feeling about it, Gavin? Yeah, this is, um, in terms of actual house and interior, this is 
Perfect, much more yeah. like what we're after. Big mm -hmm. rooms, high ceilings. This is much more... More spacious. Um, yeah, up our street, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't want to speak too soon, but I think this might be going well. Moving through the ground floor, passing a handsome dining room, a new kitchen was put in just a year ago with limestone flooring, granite worktops and oak cabinetry. Oh, I love this kitchen. Wow. Take a look at this. This is a great size oh, room. Oh, this is stunning. <laughs> I think I'm in love. Oh. And it's got the log burner. It's got the log burner. It's got the range cooker. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is... Perfect great. space for entertaining, having family over. And having your family. I love how light it is with all the yeah, windows. Got You've got a little space out into the back garden if we yeah. ever get a dog. It's perfect. This is, this our, is gorgeous. Our kitchen table would fit It's perfect, really, it? really gorgeous. Just in case you weren't swayed on this extraordinary kitchen, I'd like you to take a look in that room behind you. Mm. Oh, the pantry. Oh, wow. oh my days. <laughs> it's so spacious. You've topped it with this one. <laughs> Rounding off the downstairs, there are several handy extras, including a boot room with underfloor heating, a utility, and a downstairs shower room. The impressive staircase leads to a spacious landing where there's a bright bathroom with oak flooring. There's also lots more period character in the four double bedrooms, including the main bedroom, which is huge. So spacious. Yeah. I love how huge it's bed. Got. It's got space and it's got the character. Another room in here. Aww, Another great this size is room. Again, yeah. more original features. And there's shutters on the oh, windows as well. I and mean, this is an extraordinary house. I mean, this house actually has young family written all over it. I mean, this would be such a beautiful place to bring up a kid or two. And so much more practical than being stuck in the middle of nowhere. I am actually picturing myself living here. I oh, can wow. see myself, yeah, with kids and things, dogs. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think this is the first house that I can picture us living in. Yeah. The property sits in a half-acre plot and includes a garage, which they might want to convert into their home gym. The main garden is south-facing and feels incredibly secluded with a huge patio area and extensive lawns surrounded by flower beds and trees. But this is only telling half the story. Come through here and it's like, ba-doom! It's a secret garden. It's another oh, garden. Another garden. It's double the size. There's plenty of space for a vegetable patch. Chickens. chickens. For sure, yes. So how much do you think this costs? I think... It's going to be slightly over budget, actually. I'm going to go 525. Okay. I agree with you. I will say 515,000. Okay. Well, again, you're both wrong. Okay. Because this is on the market for 490,000 pounds. Okay, wow. Mm -hmm. Under budget. Nice. Wow. That's good news. Under budget. That is great news. My face is just oh, love. Yeah. <laughs> Your face That's has been like that since we walked in. <laughs> I, like, I just oh. love it so much. It's very <laughs> Gosh, ugly. yeah. This Victorian villa has two sizeable reception rooms, a slick kitchen diner and four double bedrooms. Whilst we've dialed down on the acreage, the smartly presented interior, impressive proportions and mature gardens really seem to have piqued Lauren and Gavin's interest. Initially, we were interested in renovation work as it's what we've done with our previous properties, but seeing this one in pristine condition. We're both busy at work, we're looking to start a family in the near future. I think not having to pull out kitchens and bathrooms is actually quite appealing, seeing it so beautiful, so yeah, think, that's a massive positive. I'm delighted. Yeah, I think the house is absolutely perfect, the garden is perfect. I think we just need to, we don't know this area at all, so I think we need to take a wander around the, the town, the village and, and see what it's like as well. Mm -hmm. Rural communities have been adversely affected by extreme weather and flooding in recent years. Renewable energy, particularly offshore wind power, is considered one of the best tools we have to combat climate change in the UK. But vital research is needed to develop the future technologies that will power this industry. Located off the coast of Fife, the Leavenmouth Demonstration Turbine is the world's most advanced offshore wind turbine dedicated solely to research and development. 
I'm meeting project engineer Lorna Bennett to learn how this site is supporting the industry's innovators and future leaders. Hi, Lorna. <laughs> So this is your baby? It is, yes. Oh, she's great. So how tall is she? So from the sea surface to the tip of the blades as she is just now is about 196 metres, so taller than the gherkin in London. Oh, wow, that's big. So tell me all about offshore. What's the situation right now and where does it need to go? So the plan is that offshore wind will become the backbone of the UK energy mix. So at the moment in the UK, we currently have about 10 gigawatts of installed capacity. So that's about 2,500 turbines turbines offshore and that's enough to power about 18 and a half million homes nearly oh, wow. and by 2030 we're hoping to have enough electricity to power all of the UK homes and by 2050 we're hoping to have enough renewable energy to power all of our homes all of our businesses all of our transport and decarbonize the whole economy so you're doing incredible work here I hope so yes <laughs> More accurately known as a nearshore turbine, it's connected to the coast by a short ramp. Just watch your hat at this point. Once you get past the fence, it can blow away. <laughs> the position makes it ideal for academic institutions and developers to demonstrate new systems and methods without the associated time and cost of travelling to an offshore wind farm. So not surprisingly, it's in high demand. So tell me about some of the projects that you've done here, because it feels like it's a little kind of laboratory for doing all things wind turbine related. Yes, so since 2017, we've actually helped demonstrate over 140 different technologies and research projects. Wow. So there's 140 different companies coming up with ideas that are going to be useful on wind turbines that you then test. Yep. Can you give an example? Or is it top secret? We've had a company called Bladebug in trialling Blade their new Bug. robot blade crawler system. Ah. So how technicians actually have to inspect and service blades at the moment is they have to climb all the way to the top of the turbine, then abseil down from the roof. So Bladebug are developing a robot that can walk along the blade and do different inspections themselves while the technician stays safe in the top of the turbine. Oh, so these are all helping with the safety of the people working here? Yes, so improving the safety of the technicians that have to work off shore, helping automate certain either laborious or dangerous tasks, but also then providing new jobs in high-tech industries. In the next five years, Wind power is expected to support over 60,000 jobs within the UK, with that figure growing as the number of turbines increases. So I am a STEM ambassador. We're really passionate about training up the, the next generation of engineers and scientists. The renewable sector is still a very young industry, so we have a very young, interested, enthusiastic workforce coming through. So you're a very passionate and very highly placed engineer here. Are you noticing a lot more women coming through? Yes, there's been a lot of focus on gender diversity and diversity in general. In my personal experience, there's more women in the renewable sector than the other industries I've worked in. And everybody's just really enthusiastic about trying to help the environment and save the world. <laughs> it's just mesmerizingly beautiful and the sound is so... It fills me with great joy talking to Lorna because there is nothing more important than saving this beautiful planet and our beautiful countryside. And if these beauties can do it, then I am 100% behind them. Oh, it's a beautiful blue sky, fresh morning here in Scotland. Time to find out what Gavin and Lauren think about all our properties. Ah, oh, my favourite Scottish housewives. Ah, oh, hello. <laughs> good morning. How are you doing this morning? Yes. It's good, we're great. You slept on the houses that we showed you. Well, what, what are your feelings about, for example, you seem to, you particularly, Lauren, actually both of you, seem to really love the mystery house. Oh, I know. Um, what are you thinking about it today? The mystery house was our perfect house to look at. When we went inside, we were blown away, weren't we? Yeah. We could totally imagine ourselves, our family, all in that house, cosy and very happy. Um, we drove around the area and we thought that the area for us, it wasn't for us, we're more set towards the Kinross and Perthshire way. I think we've learned something from every house, yeah. both the area, the type of house, what they look like, the amount of work required. 
And I think there's a compromise to be made between the three of them. Um, and that, that will be the perfect house when we find that. So what, what, what happens next? What's the next move for you? I think we're just going to keep an eye on the market and every weekend hopefully come up to Kinross, Kinrosshire and view houses and um, yeah, hopefully one will, one will come up. But it feels like we've nailed the area. Kinross is the, is the area that you, you're sort of set on. Yeah, we absolutely love Kinross. It's just because it's so close to Edinburgh as well. You can just hop in the car and you're only 45 minutes away from my family, friends and work for both of us as well. This has been a really, really good learning experience yeah. for us. I think we, we had in our head that we wanted to live in Kinross purely based on travelling through Kinross and just enjoying it. But going to the, the brewery and meeting the locals and going to see the houses has really cemented that like this is where we want to be. Well, it's been such a joy showing you around. I mean, you're so, such lovely people, but also, it's, you know, you're in such a great place in your life and it really shows that your enthusiasm and your openness to new ideas. And I really hope you find that beautiful home and then invite us to come and visit. Absolutely. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. I feel a bit uh, blushy and embarrassed to think that earlier in the show I thought that I could impart wisdom to these two wise old birds. Because I think that despite their young age, Lauren and Gavin do have very old heads on their shoulders, especially when it comes to property buying. And I'm pretty sure that they will find the house of their dreams in this gorgeous corner of Scotland. Although one thing I think we can say is that we did help them focus their mind on the beauty of Kinrosshire. And I hope that they do find somewhere, start a family, create a beautiful home and invite us to come visit. And I hope that you will join us again for another wonderful episode of Escape to the Country. Since we met, Gavin and Lauren's Edinburgh flat has now sold. And true to their word, the couple are spending every spare weekend searching for their dream countryside home in Kinross. If you would also like to escape to the country in Scotland, Northern Ireland, Wales or England and need our help, you could apply online at bbc.co.uk forward slash take part. <laughs>